we're in a season and we're looking at next year and to say god what are you saying to me about next year there's a lot of voices there's a lot of voices that will speak to you more and more so that more confusion can be be reached we will see what corona will tell us what we will do how we will do and in what way we will do whose business will flourish whose business will will crash who will have a job who will not have a job no it cannot be like that in jesus name but you need to out get out to god and i challenge you in this season i challenge you in december time that you will really get out to god to hear god what is your agenda with me in next year that it will not be first this the problem the situation and now we go to god god what must we do now no what must the circumstance do to you in the light of first of all you are standing with what god told you to do amen are you with me you're going not into canaan and then find the problem and then hear from god you're going into canaan with a word from god you're going first of all with a word already in your heart with a revelation already in your heart before you cross the jordan before you cross the jordan for next year you have the word of god in your heart but the guys that had to go and find a word in canaan they came back and that at the end of the day they turned around and had to die in the desert for 40 years because they had not the word of god in their heart joshua caleb had the word of god in their heart before what they went over when they came back they came back with the fruit to confirm the word of God in their hearts that they had before they went to spy the land. Spying the land of next year, spying the land of what could happen. Hello? Before you spy the land, before you get into 2022, you go in that place with the word of God, of what God said to you for next year. Please, my brother, please, my sister, we need to get into that lifestyle more and more in a very simple way there's a lot of voices in my soul there's a lot of stuff that can speak to me and if i will not allow god to speak to me something will but something will speak to you and you will obey a voice the challenge will be whose voice but the voice you will obey that's the way it is okay so seven points how will you hear God? When we're talking about what's God's will for your life for next year, I want, first of all, before the seven points, to give you Romans from verse 1. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I beseech you, beseech you, I challenge you, I charge you, I encourage you. That's what the word means. Romans 12 is 1. That you will present your body. Present yourself as a living, holy, and pleasing sacrifice unto the Lord. So as you present your life, even in prayer, even when you come before God, to present your life before the Lord, it's not, I'm giving up. No, you're giving over to Him. Giving up is from depression or is from negativity, is from fed upness. You're giving up. Giving over is, I surrender it to Him. I surrender it to him. There's a difference. Like we always say, deny yourself and follow him, not destroy yourself. Romans 12, 1. I present myself as a living sacrifice, not a dead sacrifice. Not a dead sacrifice. I'm alive in what I surrender to God. Amen. Are you with me? But I can be very alive in how I present myself. To that spirit of lust, or that spirit of religion, that spirit of bitterness, that spirit of unforgiveness, that spirit of negativity. I can be very alive and give myself as a living sacrifice where I can live in bitterness. But still, I need to present myself so that I'm alive in the giving of myself unto the Lord, a living sacrifice. Amen. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. A living, holy, holy is set apart for him alone. I'm alive in how I give myself, but only to one. A living, holy sacrifice to him and him alone. You've written that down. Holy, it's separated for him alone. 
And lastly, well-pleasing is a heart-to-heart connection in this sacrifice. There's a heart-to-heart connection. Well-pleasing, a heart-to-heart connection. Amen. You with me? We've changed number one and two around from this morning. So Romans 12 verse 2. When I understand to do this, then he says, and be transformed in the by the renewal of your mind. Things need to change. Just do this. Things need to change. Okay. <laughs> okay. Peter, did you do that? Things need to change. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. What are we saying? First point, how do you hear God's voice? How do you find out His will? Word of God. When you look at the Word, you look at His will. You look at His heart. It's the will of God. And in the will of God, His primary will is for you to be with Him. For you to be where He is. Why must you find out His will? His will, what to do in every situation. His will, so that you have the answer for a situation. No. His will, so that you can be where He is. Where is He next year with you? You're finding out His will so that you can be where He is with you. Not just His hand of protection because He will never leave you, never forsake you. And His hand of protection is there. Hello. Are you with me? Now you walk very slowly there. God is on His way there with you. But you decide you can... I will tell you when. And, uh, and you know, but you're going your own way. And there you go. You can go. And God's hand of protection will be there because he's ha- he will never leave you, never forsake you. But when you, when you say, all right, now you can turn around and say, God, what's your will for my life? Where are you going? He will take your hand. And then you go here. Hello? And then you turn around, you go your own way. He will be there. Uh, uh, he will be there. <laughs> He will be there. His hand of protection will be there. But if you want to walk with him, it's when you gave over. Bye, donkey. Are you with me? Oh, man. Let next year not be only because of his grace, his hand over you, because he will never leave you, never forsake you. Oh, what about next year? Giving your hand in his hand and walk with him. Amen. Are you with me? So please, my brother, so that you... Be transformed in your mind so that you can see what is there. Good, per- pleasing, and perfect will of God. Good. It is good for you not to lie. You know it's the will of God. Not to lie. You know the good will of God. It's good not to steal. The good will of God. But then, Pleasing. That's heart-to-heart connection once again. What is his heart for me? What is, how is my heart with him, his heart with me? Out of this relationship, in this relationship, we are walking together. His pleasing will. It's pleasing unto him because you're walking, walking together. What is his perfect will? That automatically in knowing his heart, you come to the place that you've so gave yourself in the word that is just automatically starting to come forth that you just... No, God doesn't want me here. He wants me there. Because your spirit is so sensitive. Because with a word, you make sure that your spirit is maturing. What am I talking about? 2 Corinthians 5. You're a new creation. Who remember that new song? I'm a new creation. Me and Vivian and who? I'm a new, grand new man. All things have, all things have passed away. But when we look at some stuff in our lives, it doesn't look at all like all things have passed away. But it's in my spirit. Everything became new. My spirit is perfect. The problem is, if you don't feed your spirit with the word of God, your spirit will not mature. Your spirit gave your life to Christ. Innocent. Perfect. But immature. Not childish. Not immature in a wrong way. That baby is immature. Is that a sin? No. Not at all. 
What is a sin? If that nine months old baby that's immature have the same way of doing when he's 18 years old, that is childish. And the problem is, we give our lives to Christ, but how do we grow up then? You need to feed your spirit with the word of God. So that your spirit can become strong, your spirit can mature. Amen. And the problem is, when we get into the word, we are talking about, first of all, you know, want to know the, the, the will of God, you want to know his voice. We're talking about the word. Amen. With the word... When you spend time with the Word, we want in our soul to experience something. We want to feel something. We want to see that revelation. We want to understand some things. But a lot of them, that is in my soul. When you feed your spirit with the Word, it's when you read the Word, and you get into the Word, and you repeat the Word, and you meditate on the Word, and you memorize the Word, and nothing, you feel nothing. That's the wise builder. That's the wise virgin. We, they take it when it's not necessary. Because here, your spirit not being mature, it's rising up. Spirit becomes stronger. 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 And some or other time, you just know how to make the right decision. Because there came a maturity in here. You have the certain prayer that you can pray. And there's just this one day where with that prayer, there's just this breakthrough. But you didn't pray the prayer in a different way. But because you put yourself into the Word of God, hello? In that decision that you made, in that prayer that you pray, there's the backing of your spirit that is mature. And God is looking for those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. Are you with me? That's number two. This was Romans 12, 2. Second one, Romans 8, 16. Holy Spirit that is testifying in my spirit. First, the word of God in my mind. The word of God in my heart to know his will. Secondly, Romans 8, verse 16. Holy Spirit testifying in my spirit. What are we talking about the day that you gave your life to Christ? Your spirit became reborn. Hello? And Holy Spirit is giving that assurity, that, that, that faith in you that you just know, that you know, that you know, I'm a child of God. How, how do you know? I just know. What is that? It's your spirit that is alive and the Holy Spirit testifying in your spirit. But then from there you must work with what Holy Spirit is testifying in your spirit. Because rejection will testify in your soul that you're not good enough. You will never make it. Stress will testify in your soul how next year will, will be. Hello? Anxiety or fear will testify in your soul of what will happen. And fear will have a voice. Stress can have a voice. Anxiety can have a voice. Circumstances will have a voice and they will testify in your soul. And they will keep on testifying in your soul. And you cannot overrule it unless you understand the testimony of the Holy Spirit in your spirit. But if you can work with the testimony of the Holy Spirit in your spirit, it will start to overrule the testimony in your soul. Are you with me? That's the man where God says, I want people to worship me in spirit, with your spirit, where his spirit will testify in your spirit. From that place, the worship will be genuine. The worship will be true. The, gen the worship will be innocent. From your spirit, that's perfect. But you better get into the word and into prayer. Hello? To, so that your spirit can mature. Otherwise, with my soul, you offend me, I withdraw my heart. You hurt me, I withdraw. I like this, great. I like you guys not so much anymore, so. And I'm flirting 
with relationships in the way that I can put my heart in a relationship and withdraw it. And put my heart in the group and withdraw it. I'm in the cell group, but then I don't like it anymore. Or somebody does something wrong and I can withdraw it. I have the right to do that because I flirt around with my heart. I can throw it wherever I want to. Or I know in my spirit what God has told me. How and where and in what way I must be. Are you with me? The instability will go with you. And in the midst of whatever, you'll be able to declare in 2022 what God has told you, what you are standing for and with and where you are going. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. I had this one guy. I worked with a lot of, at one stage, with a lot of knolle that uh, I would lead them to the Lord and then they visit me and when they're gone, then some of my clothes are gone with them. And then they visit me and I told you some of that, I think. And then we will eat like lacquer chips and bread and something and halfway through I know it's the middle of the month. I said, where did you get it? I said, no, oh, we stole it there at Stadium Cafe. But, but just while they're eating, not just even stopping. And this one guy, he was really, really, really a wreck out of circumstances. Yeah. And, um, and he gave his life to Christ and he came to me later and very shy in the sense of, he says, no, I'm, when I pray, when I pray, I'm saying a swear word. And this, the devil interrupts me with a swear word. And I said to him, what is the word? And he didn't want to tell me. And after a while, he said, okay, you, you will tell me. But when I pray, that's the word that comes to me the whole time. And he says, it's the word Abba. I said, my brother. And for that guy in his situation, where there's no way in the sense of any father figure, of any way of you are accepted. God come, and when he speaks to him, to, to the Father, Holy Spirit, testifying the Spirit, you are my child. I am your papa. I am your daddy. Hello? Ah, oh, so amazing. But so many times in our lives then, it's that just that assurance. But you will not get into that place to understand how to experience that if you don't put the word in you when you don't experience anything. When you put the word in here and your spirit is growing, but you feel nothing. And the word is doing nothing according to you. And you experience nothing. And you don't see mind in sense not necessarily changing. And you don't know more of his will necessarily. And, but you just meditate, meditate, meditate on his word. You know, when the devil comes and says, you're a, you're a rubbish you're not necessarily going to believe him. But when you hear that voice a hundred times, you're going to start to believe it. Now, why with the word of God we get irritated when we hear the same thing for the fourth time? It's not supposed to. Are you with me? So you're going to speak it till you believe it, and then you're going to speak it because you believe it. Let's say, I'm going to speak it till I believe it. And then I'm going to speak it because I believe it. Amen. And so it must work for your life all the way through. Let it be so in Jesus' name. First of all, to hear God's voice, to know His will, the Word. Secondly, Holy Spirit in my spirit. Amen. Are we with one another? Number three, John 10, verse 4 and 14. Faith in God. John 10, verse 4 and 14 says, My sheep know my voice, and they follow me. Jesus said, you know my voice. Finish. D.L. Moody said, God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Let's say that. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. So just a sincere faith. How do you know his voice? How can you hear his voice? Faith. Because my God says, and he said, that I know his voice I take it, I believe it, and according to that, I will step out in faith in what I have in my heart. But don't just say, I'm going to step out in faith, I'm just going to go to the place and say, God said to me, I must come for my Ferrari, I'm here. 
First of all, get into the Word. Amen. Secondly, Holy Spirit, testify in my spirit. And then thirdly, step out in faith. By faith, you know His will, His voice. Number four, Revelation 2, verse 29. Ears in the church. Uh, hello? Ears in the church. You were in the church. Some guys, that's the place where they really go into the sleep, you know? When it's the rugby, ragabush, and all these other stuff, the ears are alive, and the eyes are open, and the ears, and, and the mouth, yeah! But the eyes, and the ears, and the mouth, from Saturday rugby to Sunday in the church. And then in the week again, something, ah, and yes, he's there, and that is there. Okay. <laughs> but may God help you. Ears in the church. What are we talking about? The seven letters to the church in the book of Revelation. Before everything is shaken in heaven and on earth. And confusion and all hell break loose and a lot of stuff happening. God starts in Revelation with, I want to speak to the different, everybody say different, different churches. And for every church, there's a different message. And after the message was given, it ends off with, for to everyone that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. There's things that God going to say in the context of church and not to you just individual. And where you need to understand in the context of the specific church where you are at, what is God saying to this church? What is God saying to CRC? What is God saying to that Dutch Reformed Church? They stand accountable before God for that. But you know, it's okay. It's good to hear a lot of stuff that can have a great impact on my life. But first of all, the guys in Smyrna or in Laodicea, they stand accountable for what God has said to that specific church. You need to know that you know what God has said to you in this church and for this church and through this church to the community, where you study, where you work, where you are. Very important. But you are somewhere. And if you are here, it's good to know what God is saying to that church, but you're not going to be faithful to God. And your ears are not hearing what the Spirit is saying to your church. And you are not found faithful. Well, I'm excited about what God is saying to that one, to that one, to that. That's good. But if God wanted everybody at that stage just to hear one message, he wouldn't have given seven different, different, different messages. There's no difference in theology. We're not talking about that. But this is what is great. Build on that. This is what is wrong. Get that out. And if you understand that, this is the reward, how you will see more of me. And at the end of the day, hear. Church, hear what the Spirit is saying to you as a specific church in Laodicea. Or to you in this town. To you here. To you there. Very important. Amen. May God help us to hear him accurately, collectively. Number five. 1 Corinthians 12. Gifts of the Spirit. Gifts of the Spirit. Some people too lazy to get out to God, too lazy to get into the Word and uh, to hear Holy Spirit in the Spirit and to step out in faith and to hear what God is saying in the church. They, yeah, what's the word? Parasite. What's a parasite in English? Parasite. It's like a parasite in the prophetic. I go with what God said to that one. I got this prophecy. I got that prophecy. And say, no, prophecy must confirm what you have in your spirit. That's yes, but that's also no. Because, you know, I'm on my way. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. 
Hello? So there's stuff that God can, there's things that God can reveal through the prophetic to my brother, my sister, to speak into my life. God decided that we will speak into one another's lives. Are you with me? It cannot be a substitute for getting out to the Word, getting out to God, hearing the Holy Spirit, stepping out in faith. It's not a substitute. But I need to be also to be dependent on one another in the context of where God could address certain, stuff, certain things in my life. Because even prophetically, we call it actually discipleship. Somebody can tell you, you know, I see this thing in your life, but this is not right. Oh, it's not confirmation about what God said to me. <laughs> okay. But what is discipleship? Discipleship is somebody taking you into a place where you've not been yet, but you need that person to get into that place. Otherwise, why is the Bible talking about make disciples? Not be a disciple, but go and make a disciple. People must make you and bring you into the patterns that God has for your life. Yes, you and Holy Spirit. Yes, you and the Word. But number five here. You need your brother and your sister. And if you're not accountable and open to some mentors in your life, not the ones that you like in mentoring, in discipleship, they will be people, and you won't like what they say. And when you find that sometimes, then you know you are in discipleship. Remember Hebrews 12, this discipline does not seem pleasant at the moment. Now the Word of God says, when you will be discipled, sometimes it will not be pleasant. It will definitely sometimes not be pleasant to your flesh. Because if you are dealing with flesh, flesh does not like discipline. Not discipline because you have a mistake. Discipline because you have potential. You remember? Hallelujah. You with me still? May God help you. But let the gifts go with the gifts. You have a command. So if you cannot speak in tongues yet, it's not to boast about it for the one that speak. But go that somebody will pray for you. So you will, you will be able to speak in tongues. Because when you pray in tongues, your spirit prays and telling your soul and the voices in your soul to be quiet. Because 1 Corinthians 14 says, when you pray in a tongue, your soul, you are, your mind is unfruitful. You bring your mind to become still before the Lord. So that all those voices can become still. So that you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit testifying in your spirit. When you pray in tongues, it means you are praying in His perfect will. Your spirit is perfect. You're praying with the voice of your spirit. That's in tongues. You are praying perfectly in His perfect will. And I'm praying in this direction. Just look here. I'm praying in this direction. This is the perfect will of God. I'm praying in tongues. And then my soul, where the voices are all there, and they become quiet. Shh, mine become unfruitful. And suddenly I become aware of what is in my spirit. And after a while, I have a release. And what I do is just in His will. And I can hear. I can hear His will for me. Amen. Number six. Matthew 7, 7. Prayer in relationship. Prayer in relationship. Prayer in relationship. You can have prayer, and they can pray to Muhammad, they can pray to Buddha, they can pray, they can meditate for 40 years. It means nothing. You can pray in the name of religion and because you're supposed to and in performance. But pray from a place of relationship where in prayer you position yourself before the Lord. Give us today our daily bread. That's what we're supposed to pray. And if you don't pray tomorrow, you're going to go hungry because you didn't pray for your daily bread. No, it's not that. There's a guy out there. He's using God's name in vain. He's involved with a lot of rubbish that is... Forsaping in all the gold and all the money. He is drowning in all the money and all the stuff. And he didn't pray for God for his daily bread. 
What is it then? Why must you pray for your, and ask for your daily bread? God is saying, position yourself in dependency towards God as your Father. Prayer is positioning. Hello? In prayer, you pray that because you acknowledge that I am dependent on you. I choose to be dependent on you, and I acknowledge you that my provision is from you as my Father. Amen. Are you with me? We're talking about how you will hear God's voice even for next year. And last one, Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. It was the Word of God, the Holy Spirit in your spirit. Faith in God, ears in the church, gifts of the Spirit, prayer in relationship, and last one, the peace of God. The peace of God. My brother, my sister, there's a peace in your soul when you have sorted out some stuff with somebody. Or there's a peace in your soul where you don't experience the anxiety or the stress or the depression. That's your emotions. This peace is not a, according to your emotions. This peace is according to what is in your spirit. Jesus says, this peace that I give you, not as the world give you. A different kind of peace. And that you only will know if you allowed your spirit to mature through the word, through prayer, through praying in tongues, through time with God and the Holy Spirit. Amen? So from that place, you will come into a place of understanding you're commanded. Be anxious of nothing. So it's something to share your heart with God and to say, God, I have this anxiety in me. And then we can say, no, I went out, I, I spoke to God, and I just shared my heart. I just poured out my heart before God. But meanwhile, you, you just had a, what's a better word for hell of a tantrum? You had this major flesh tantrum before the Lord. And it boils down to, you have no manners before the throne. There is protocol. There is respect for God. So it doesn't mean when I speak to people, I must have manners and I can not what. But God, with God, I can be myself. Being yourself does not mean you mustn't have respect for him. The fear of God must be on your life. Sometimes in the, in the, in the Reformed churches, there's one thing that had a major, in certain ways, certain respect for God. And a lot of things wrong, yes. But we cannot judge. But in the charismatic, we became, in the past, not anymore, in Jesus' name. We speak, not, don't speak that over the churches, but blasé about stuff. And we can share, we can speak, and we can... But in some of that, there wasn't always respect. May God help us that we'll understand how to have the fear of God on our lives. And that we will have manners in the throne room. We will have manners because we respect. Amen. May God help you help me. In Jesus' name. Be anxious of nothing, but let all your requests and desires be made known before God. In prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. You cannot keep on just praying the same thing because then it became become a tantrum. It become a nagging. And that is not what God expects of you. And that is in the flesh. Are you with me? But I end off with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving in what way? That God going to do exactly as I prayed. <laughs> no. I thank you, Lord, because you know everything. You know the best. Whatever. At the end of the day, I, I put this before you, Lord, with a focus and with intensity because I'm dependent on you. But at the end of the day, you know absolutely the best for my life. Therefore, I thank you. And in that thank you, it's because you believe in the integrity of your Father. You believe in the integrity of your Master, Jesus Christ. And the one that is with you, Holy Spirit. Amen? That's why you end off with thanksgiving. Oh, it can be a ritual when you pray for your food. Or it can be basically just a declaration. Because I respect 
And I want to honor and I want to declare who is the one who gave to me. And that I want to thank him that he is in charge of my life. Amen. Let it become lifestyle, not ritual. Hello. There's ritual because of spirit of religion. And there's lifestyle because of foundation in your life. Get a lifestyle based on the foundation of the word. Let it be so in Jesus' name. And so as you do that with thanksgiving, then the peace of God that transcends all understanding. Not, I'm confused and I'm stressed because I don't understand. Now you pray so that you can understand, so that you can have peace. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Not peace because you now understand. If you only have peace after your understanding. After your understanding. That means I need to feel in control. Then I have peace. When I feel I'm in control, then I have peace. Because I understand. No. This peace is before you understand. And with no promise that you will ever understand. <laughs> peace that transcends all understanding. That goes beyond if you feel confused or not, it goes beyond that. And it will protect your heart, protect your mind against rubbish decisions, against the confusion, against things that you can make decisions about that is not right. Bring yourself into that place. And when you go with the peace beyond the confusion in your heart or confusion in your mind, when you then it means you can know the will of God. You can know what he wants from you. Even though there's turmoil in heart, turmoil in mind, you can really know his perfect will for your life through a peace that goes beyond heart and mind. Amen. That's a promise from your Father. Take that. Father, we are before you. And I pray that you will guide us. Guide us in your wisdom. Guide us in that what you have for us, Lord. God, I pray for every man, woman in this place. That they will come to know you in such a way. That they will have such a hunger for your word. So that they can come to know your will. They will so become aware of what you have for them in their spirit. As you speak through the Holy Spirit in their spirit. Thank you, Father, that we can step out in faith, knowing that you said we know your voice, and therefore we believe it. God, that we will hear what you have to say to our specific church. And we pray for your grace on every other church, that they will hear your voice, especially also in this season. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts of the Spirit, and we choose to cover the gifts, to push with the gift, especially to prophesy. We position ourselves and say, we choose to be dependent on you and practically also showing that by running into a lifestyle of prayer. Thank you, Father, that we can have the capacity to experience your peace that goes beyond all understanding. That God, in the midst of what we go through in our hearts and our minds, we are on our way into perfection. But in the process, for your grace, that you are able to give us your peace that can protect us as against fleshly wrong decisions. Thank you for your grace and your protection. So we pray in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen. Let it be so. In Jesus' name.